Well, there, there's also a hadith that, that uh, I fear more for you than the Dajjal or Riyadh, which is showing up in Shia. So, I mean, the Dajjal, from one point of view, if you know your deen, it's going to be clear. If you don't know your deen, you'll get uh, misled by him. And some aspects of the Dajjal that are important is that the Prophet ﷺ uh, said if the Dajjal came today, the children of Medina would chase him out with their sandals. Ibn Abbas and the Prophet ﷺ said if he came today, that he would not be a problem because his ummah, they were all knowledgeable. Towards the end of time, one of the things that I didn't mention that I wanted to was knowledge is taken away. And the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih al Bukhari that the uh, he said uh, that knowledge is not seized suddenly, but it's seized by the death of the scholars, people of knowledge. And then he said, until the point where people take ignorant people as their scholars, so they ask them for fatwa, and they give them fatwa without knowledge, so they go astray and lead others astray. The, uh, the factors then so far disheartening for me, what is the most effective thing to do? They are disheartening on the other hand, and the time went so quick, that I didn't really get to where I wanted to go. But they actually, they get, what's happening right now, I think, Allah, is that we're being prepared uh, for a, some major events. And I didn't get to those. I wanted to get to the signs that haven't come yet. And one of the signs that haven't, hasn't come yet is the Mahdi and the Prophet the Mahdi is Mutawatha Ma'nabi. The coming of the Mahdi is Mutawatha. And there, there will be a Muslim leader who is going to, uh, he'll first take the Arabian Peninsula, and then he'll take uh, Persia, and then he'll take Constantinople. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ said that, uh, that the Muslims would take Constantinople right before uh, the, the hour that the Dajjal comes. They'll take it with takbir, just saying, Allah Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Uh, Allahu Akbar. And to me that's an indication that they're already Muslims. They just need to be reminded. In other words, if an army shows up, I think the Turkish people are ready to go. And, and another thing to mention about the Turks is that according to the, the New World Order's, uh, one of their main ideologues, uh, Samuel Huntington, the country they fear more than any other country in the Muslim world is Turkey. And in fact, Zbigniew Brzezinski is saying that the Turks, that the Europeans should allow the Turks into the common market. They're, they're pushing for that because they, they think that in a sense if, they'll, if they give them these crumbs of Europe that they'll forget about their uh, Islam. And uh, so they're actually very worried about what they call a core state. They say that, that you know the West has core states. They have England and Germany are their core states right now in France and, and England. And they say that the Muslims have no core state. They don't have a core state that represents their civilization. And that they're not really worried about Saudi Arabia because it, does, it just doesn't have what it takes to be a core state in terms of military power, population, historical precedent, and many other things. Whereas Turkey does, it has all of the uh, qualities. So they're, they're actually very worried about Turkey. And this is why they're coming down hard. And, and the government, the, the military in Turkey has been the bastion of, of uh, sec secularism. And, and, and in recent years, there's been a really wake awakening in, amongst the Turkish people towards their roots and their greatness, because it's, it's their natural greatness. So, and the same is true of Egypt, with the exception that, that Egypt is such an impoverished state right now. But they're very fearful of Egypt also. Egypt is very, uh, the population of Egypt is massive. It's a highly educated uh, country, but it doesn't have the military nor the economic resources. <coughs> Uh, some people say there's no Ishkiyat on the issue of reestablishing the Khilafah. Is this true? Reality never existed during the classical era, and so there's no Ishkiyat from our imams of the past. The, you know, the Khilafah is a far kifaya. It's, it's supposed to be fulfilled. Although, unlike other far kifaya, the ulama say that if the, it's, not, it's not an incumbent on every individual Muslim when it's not being fulfilled. 
uh, that's uh, Mawirdi's opinion, and, and, and it's the opinion of the Maliki scholars that, um, that I know, and I don't know if there's any fidaf about that. There might be a fidaf, but my, what I was taught, my understanding is that uh, the people who are called Ahlul Hal wal Aqad are responsible for uh, establishing the khilaf. And those are the ulama and the notables in the community. And if they don't do it, and according to the Maliki scholars, there's basically uh, three ways that you bring about a khilaf. One is by shura of Ahlul Hal wal Aqad, which is obviously a good way, if not the best way. And the other is by an appointment of the previous khalifa, which, which can be by inheritance, and this is what Bani Umayya did, Muawiyah uh, he, he took it from a khilaf al minhaj al nabuwa which was that Allah uh, would allow the khalifa to emerge like Abu Bakr without a special appointment, only with ishara, and he made his son Yazid khalifa, and he did it as an ishtihad. I mean, he, his intention was good, that's our opinion, that's, that's the Sunni position. But the point uh, being, uh, and then the, 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 the other type is what they call mutahallim, who is somebody who takes a sword and, and says, anybody goes against me, I'll chop their head off. And, and, and the Muslims are unfortunately in that type of condition, if it does happen, they are commanded to summon uh, a Because fighting, if he really does have power, to fight him would result in a greater fitna which is killing Muslims, which should be avoided uh, as, uh, you know, in any situation, unless it's Imam Mahdi will appear during Ramadan where a moon sun eclipse occur in the same month. Its research indicates this in the year 2004. Um, there are some hadiths that, that uh, to indicate that nobody can say for sure. You can't give any dates. Anybody gives you any dates, you, you, we just can't take them. Uh, Imam Suyuti said that the Ummah, the Ajr of the Ummah would end sometime in the 15th century. He based it on a hadith that indicates that this Ummah lasts, uh, is half of the, the life of the Jewish Ummah. And they lasted 2,000 years. And so the Ummah would only last 1,000 years, which is why many of the, we had our own millennial fever uh, 400 years ago because people really thought that it was all coming to an end. And Imam Suyuti was born in the 10th century and lived into the 11th century, so he obviously passed the thousand year mark, wrote a fatwa called Al-Kish, and the Ummah that was an end, insight into the fact that the Ummah will last more than a thousand years, because he actually said, look, we're all alive, and, and it's been over a thousand years. But what he said is that there, it, it only was a thousand years, but there's a dua of the Prophet in which he said, oh Allah, give my Ummah an extra half day. And somebody asked him, how long would that be? And he said, uh, 500 years, because a day without loss a thousand years. And so he said it wouldn't go past 1,500 years, which means we have about 70 years left. Uh, and Allah, Allah knows best. That's not the sa'ah, because the sa'ah comes after the ummah, the prophet. The ummah is finished, and the sa'ah comes on the worst people. There's no Muslims left. لم يبقى الأرض من يقول Allah, Allah. Nobody left on the earth who says Allah, Allah, or La ilaha illallah. So that's not the sa'ah. So, and then anyone who claims to be the Mahdi is not the Mahdi. Anyone who claims who says I'm the Mahdi, he's not the Mahdi because the Mahdi actually doesn't want bay'ah. He'll, he'll take bay'ah in Mecca at the Rukan and, and people will say, and he says, I don't want bay'ah, I'm nobody.